Hey everybody, it's me, Angela Walters. Welcome to this week's live chat. Um, sorry about rescheduling last week's. I was planning on doing Tula's quilt last week, but then she didn't talk about it on her Tuesday, so I thought I'll just push it, we'll just take the week off, no problem. And then I was gonna talk about it this week, but then she didn't get a chance to talk about it on her Tuesday talk. So I've had to postpone that temporarily. Uh, the main idea being that um, she wants to show up first and I gotta respect that. So anyway, I can't wait to show you pictures and talk through that process because that's a question that comes up quite a bit. What is it like working on those quilts? And so um, not gonna talk about that today. So it was like kind of like, oh crud, what do I talk about? So we're just gonna do a casual, informal, ask me anything kind of thing. If you have any questions about anything, I'll, I'll answer it. Usually for those of you, if this is your first time attending a live chat, I like to try to teach something or have a show and tell or, or some kind of educational piece, but this time it's just gonna be, you know, whatever questions come up. And then next week, hopefully I'll get to show the Tula quilt and I'm gonna show you some projects you can make for the um, upcoming big football game, if anybody happens to be watching that. So I uh, definitely have plans for upcoming uh, live chats, just this one caught me by surprise. So anyway, um, looking forward to that. I did already get some questions written down, but Jessica's here monitoring them and she's gonna kind of call them out to me here in just a second. And so I can, if any questions you have about quilting or anything in general if I don't know the answer I'll just make something up I'm pretty good at um, you know winging it but real quick though before we get to it just want to remind you for those of you that live in the Kansas City area or might find yourself in the Kansas City area the first week of June is a big week for us here at quilting is my therapy that's going to be our annual quilt walk which is like our it's an, a quilt show where you go from spot to spot and collect the pieces of a custom pattern that I put together. It's really fun. You get to see the adorable downtown Liberty, Missouri, where we're located, the historic area um, just outside of Kansas City. So a lot of fun. So that's June 3rd from 9 to 3, if I, 10 to 3 in the day, something like that. I'll have to get those dates better next time. But we also have other events as well. So I'm going to have a dinner and a trunk show the next day. So if you want to come to that. There's still a few tickets left. I'm looking forward to bringing in a catered meal, having a really nice atmosphere, having a bar. Um, not that that's necessary, but you know, I gotta have wine. And then I'm gonna be talking about quilts and a little bit of my journey. So it's, it's kind of like a, an intimate evening with me, if, if that's what you wish. Although I did ask my kids how much they would pay to eat dinner with me. It turns out they are not willing to pay at all. So um, I'm just glad that, you know, somebody would. And then after that dinner, the next day, that Monday, kicks off our week long of classes, hands-on long arm classes. I am so excited about it because I love teaching quilting and I rarely get to teach hands-on long arm classes because you have to have quite a bit of them. So we're bringing in a handy quilter truck full of long arms and we're doing, uh, I think, six classes in a row. It's gonna be lots of fun. So you can definitely, um, again, if you're gonna be in the area, check that out. A range of topics, it's just gonna be, be a good time. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I love teaching on any kind of machine. That doesn't matter, but rarely do I get to teach hands-on classes on long arms, so excited. We did that last year and it was such a smashing success, so we, we're doing it again. So before I um, ask Jessica, she's monitoring this live. If you're right now live watching it, you can type those in the chat. There were a few questions that came up and I think we're just gonna hit an assortment of topics, so hopefully you can find it helpful. All right, there was one question I didn't write down about the Supreme Slider. So, the Supreme Slider, I love this because it has a nice smooth side that makes the quilt kind of glide through your machine a little bit easier on your sewing machine. And then the back is kind of like this pink tacky, spot, uh, tacky kind of uh, feeling. The question was, when you get it, it's brand new, it's nice, it sticks really great, but after a while, some of that fuzz starts sticking to it. How do you clean it? Super easy. You just rinse it underwater and you let it dry and then it will retain its it's um, beautiful, tacky, sticky self. It doesn't leave a residue or anything. It just kind of sits right there. Another thing I do, because if it does get a uh, little dusty on the back, it could start sliding around and it's never fun when you quilt through your quilt and your Supreme slider. I have done that. So I use a little bit of washi tape or um, you know, non-residue tape just to kind of tape it around the edges a couple places to keep it from moving. Not necessary, but you know, it only takes ruining one Supreme slider before you have to figure that out. All right, the next question that came up was from Mary Leffler. Hey, Mary. Um, are there going to be new, more episodes of The Midnight Quilter? So if you remember, two years ago, I was pretty good about releasing those. Last year, I released a whole one episode of The Midnight Quilter. But this year, um, definitely. So we have 
got our content calendar ready. I'm looking forward to releasing 15 episodes. That's my goal, 15 episodes or videos throughout the year, as well as the live chats every week and a couple of free motion challenges. So yes, you'll get to see uh, Midnight Quilter episodes very, very soon, starting March 7th. So that's when the next one will come out. I love it that Mary asked that question because I was like, oh, that's right, I need to talk about that. All right, Teresa asked, do I ever applique? And if so, what method? So for those of you that might not know, applique is where you take a piece of fabric and you put it on another piece of fabric and you put them together somehow. Um, there's ways you can do that by hand, of course. You can use fusible. I love fusible applique, where you use that iron-on interfacing. You cut out your shapes and you just iron it in place. What's really nice about that is you can cut out all sorts of shapes, arrange them how you want, seal them down with your iron, and then use the quilting to kind of secure them permanently. So that's my favorite technique, although I will tell you Tula, Tula Pink has been getting into um, applique, hand applique. I'm like, dang it, I'm going to be working on enough of those quilts, I'm probably going to eventually want to give it a shot. Um, she's been English paper piecing for several years, and I just never thought I would ever like it, and then finally bit the bullet and learned how to do it. And so um, as Tula Pink goes, so do, so do I. So I might have to change that answer later on. I might end up doing it by hand. Um, I, again, it's a fun technique. What I love about quilting or making quilts in general, there's so many different techniques. You can pick and choose what you like to do and how you like to do it. All right, Mary P., um, one of my long army members, she's getting ready to load a quilt on her long arm and she's gonna put flannel backing. Any special tips, anything for that? Um, the good news is it's no problem quilting flannel, especially on a long arm. The nice thing about it is it tends to have a looser weave, and so it's not, you don't have to worry too much about tension. And it's not too stretchy, so no problem. I would treat it just like you do any other cotton fabric. Just be careful not to over-tighten your um, bars, your leaders. You don't want to, you know, stretch it. But yeah, no problem. Flannel, linen, I love quilting linen because it's just that loose weave makes it look so nice. Um, it's when you get to the finer fabrics that are more tightly woven that are maybe a little stretchy that you have to be careful what you're doing, like minky or cuddle or something like that. Uh, but no, flannel's great, and when you're done, you have a, a cozy, comfy quilt. Um, I love it. Or fleece as well. I like putting fleece on the back too. Great questions. All right, last one I wrote down, and then Jessica's going to throw them at me. Um, Gail asks, and this is a good question, are the videos of me quilting in real time or sped up? So if you watch any of the free motion challenge video series I put together where we, we work through a technique or a design idea, um, I always demonstrate on a sewing machine and then do a little bit on the long arm so you can kind of see how that goes together. So the answer is sometimes they're sped up. Um, on the long arm is never sped up because that's pretty fast. In a video, now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this out loud and I'm gonna sound like I have like a weird um, you know, attention to detail with this thing, but I always show it real time, everything right up front. And then as we see it come together, then I'll speed it up a little bit or cut out pieces just to make it go a little bit quicker. So if you're watching and you're like, oh, that looks really fast. Um, if it's towards the end of the video, sometimes I speed it up a little bit, but always show it without it being sped up in the beginning so you can see how it goes together. Uh, the idea when I'm putting together a video, if you think about it, it's different than being in a class. Like if you all that are watching live right now are in a class with me, I don't think you would get distracted. I think I could hold your attention, but a video is different. It's hard to stay focused on that. So I try to keep the videos pretty quick. I try to keep them, um, you know, we're not dragging. I want them to be engaging and, and get to the point and, and let you move on with your day. Um, one fun thing, I don't even know if I'm supposed to tell this, but I'm going to. We are embarking on a new website, and part of that website is going to have class functionality built into it. So um, going forward, I'll be able to have longer videos that maybe go with the shorter ones. So for those of you that do want to watch it, all of it and everything, then you can definitely still see that. So. Yeah, that was a long answer to the question that you probably were like, I don't really care, but there you go. Um, I got that for you. <laughs> and then um, I'll take whatever questions. She's so cute. She's just writing them down so fast. All right. Questions. Perfect. Great. She's going to read them out for me. What brand of soluble marking tool do you use? What brand of water soluble marking pen do I use? I'm trying to see if I have it handy. I never have it handy. Have you noticed that your marking tools are never handy? Um, I like the Dritz water soluble marker. It's the blue marker with a white cap. I'm pretty sure it's been around forever. Um, Mark Be Gone, I think is what it's called. I'm very particular about my marking tools because I don't 
you just hear so many scary stories and I don't want to mark something and not have it come out. And I've never had that marker let me down. Now, that being said, I have used other markers. Um, chalk pencils are great, especially on darker fabrics. I like the pounce pads. So I do have a, an, a, a toolbox of different marking tools, but specifically that water soluble marker is the Dritz. Um, fun fact, when I very, very first started quilting, I marked out a whole quilt with my water soluble marker. You can tell how old, how long ago that was. And I marked out like all this cool stuff and I came back the next day to quilt it and it was gone. I had accidentally used the air soluble marker. That's a thing where it just goes away on its own. After that, I threw that marker away. So I'm like, why do I have this and why? I didn't even know. So then I had to remark the whole thing. That was not fun. But anyway, that wasn't a question you asked, but there you go. All right, next one. Is the Quilt Walk logo a hint for the upcoming Quilt Walk quilt? Oh, that's a, is the Quilt Walk logo a hint for the upcoming Quilt Walk quilt? No, it's not. It's just the standard logo. Um, every year I think about Basically for the quilt walk, you come to the shop, you get the finishing instructions for this quilt, and then you go to some of the participating shops, there'll be 12 of them, and you can pick up the block patterns at each one, and then you put it together to make the quilt. So it's like a sampler quilt. It's a lot of fun to put together. It's a, it's a great challenge because I've got to figure out how to break up a quilt into 13 pieces, um, but no, it's actually a true story. It's not designed yet. It's in my head, and it looks amazing but it's on my calendar to get done this month. But um, no, that Quilt Walk quilt will be a sampler style quilt. It's gonna be made in the crystals fabric. So if you remember from this last challenge, it's gonna be very rainbow, very bright. Um, but beyond that, I'll show you as soon as I have a picture of it, actually. Do I need prior experience for the upcoming classes in June? No. In fact, if you've never touched a long arm, you are ideal because you don't have any bad habits and I don't have to um, break those bad habits. You're, you're open to molding, but no, you don't have to have a handy quilter long arm and you don't have to have handy quilter ex or long arm experience. Um, it's so much fun. If you've never even tried a long arm to take a class, a hands-on long arm class, somebody loads it for you. Somebody changes your bobbin. All you do is walk in and start quilting. And so it's a great, great way to, um, spend some quality time on a long arm if you, if you've ever been interested in it, but no, you definitely don't have to have experience. Is registration open for the long arm classes? Yeah, I did kind of like show that real quick and then gloss over and go, yes, registration is open and most of the classes are almost full. So you definitely, if you're kind of thinking about that, you might want to just check it out. We're going to be talking about thread. I'll have a class on thread painting, a class on borders and backgrounds, which just so happens may or may not be the subject of the next challenge. We're going to have a class on motifs. There you go, fuzzy face place, Lee. Leah, you're going to love that, um, which is going to be the topic for the next challenge, the two down. So I, I love to use the classes as a way to kind of um, vet out some of the, the challenges. Anyways, and then other, other classes as well. So it, registration is open. I'll put a link in the description box, or you can go to quiltingismytherapy.com. Um, but like I said, they're all almost full, so you don't want to hesitate for sure. Which free motion challenge quilting along is best to start with? When, when I started the free motion challenge video series, series um, first the very first one, it was such a whim kind of thing. Like I was in a hotel in Denver, just got done fi filming the night quilt show. I thought, oh, this will be fun, let's do that. And I just threw it out there and it's been phenomenally popular ever since. And we're now on what, coming up on 13 or 14 challenges. Anyway, they all have a different topic and they don't necessarily go in, it's not like you have to start with one and work through it. Now. That question does come up quite a bit and I probably should take some time to think how would I suggest doing these challenges. So the short answer is you just pick one and, and go with it. As far as the content, um, a great beginner one might be the fillers challenge because I show so many different designs in there. But like I had the swirls challenge. If you're like, man, I just cannot get swirls or I can't figure out feathers or quilting with rulers, you can jump right into it. And so you don't have to it's not like math where they build off each other, right? They're, they're standalone, standalone topics. So look through the, the offerings and, and see what is it that you want to learn and then check that out. And what's really fun, um, I love doing the, the challenges in the video series because they stay up on my YouTube channel or my website indefinitely. It's a great way to practice. And then you can always come to live chats and ask any questions that you have. So to see those prior challenges, you can go to my YouTube channel or go to quiltingismytherapy.com. Um, there's a little free motion challenge button at the top. 
So if, if you were to like make me give you an option, either the fillers or maybe the rulers, something, something that has a lot of assorted designs that you can kind of then build off of. How do you prevent sewing through your Supreme slider? Um, very carefully, you have to make sure it stays clean because it will, it will move around. If you think about as we're pushing down and pushing that quilt through, if, if there's any fuzz on the back or it's not adhered exactly where it needs to be, it'll, it'll move around. So like I said, kind of at the beginning, I'll put a little bit of tape on the edges just to help hold it in place. Um, you don't have to do that. It just kind of helps keep it there. This is not the question, but I have to tell you, I probably should put together a blooper reel of all the things I've done wrong while filming that I trim out so you can't see it. But one time I sure did quilt through my free motion slider while filming. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. And I'm kind of like talking and like, Ugh. and I realized later that I had, I had quilted through it. And then um, this last challenge, one of the videos I quilted on top of my ruler and broke the needle broke the ruler like it was like I know it was all filmed too it was like oh my gosh and so um yeah you got to know that for every polished video that you see there's a lot of uh mess ups in there so anyway is there any salvaging the slider once you quilt through it absolutely yeah so you'll just have some decorative holes through here I wish I I know I have mine I never throw any of them away so I keep them yeah this is not going to hurt anything if there's some holes through it um just make sure it stays in place Have I tried using the felting needle on the long arm? Yes. So one of the fun things about handy quilter specifically, that's the only one I really know about, is the different um, options you have. And the felting needle is kind of different. It's, it's a different style. It has like two needles and then you put your yarn in or whatever and it just kind of uh, felts it. It looks really cool looking kind of like applique stuff. I have played around with it. I know enough to be dangerous, but I've not done extensive work on it so no I can't really uh, speak too much to it but it's really cool how you can add some different embellishments to your quilt just by switching out the type of foot or needle that you're using good questions everybody I'm super like they were put on the spot like come up with some questions and this is good diverse I love it okay is the Taj ruler supposed to have a rounded top no, it's supposed to be pointy. So the cutout in the center is going to look like a leaf. Now, if we look at the cutout, I don't think I have a Taj ruler. It looks point. It looks kind of rounded, but the way the foot comes up and out, no, it's going to have a point. Now, if you're going around the outside, and you go around the outside and go all the way around, it is going to have a rounded top. But in the video, the uh, machine quilting with rulers free motion challenge, I have a pointy ruler uh, video, and I show you how do you get that pointy at the top. Uh, so check that out, but I'll tell you the quick answer. If you want it to be nice and crisp, you go all the way up and then you shift the ruler to the other side of your foot and come all the way down. But yeah, if you go all the way around it without you know, moving that ruler, you'll get a little bit of a rounded top and that has to do with the distance between the needle and the edge of the foot. So there's a quarter inch usually right there and so it just gives it that rounded look. Do I have any good advice on entering quilts into local shows? No. <laughs> um, so I have to tell you, it, it depends on the show, right? I, I have been to shows. I have done exhibits. I have actually judged a show. I did not like that. I'm not, I want everybody to win. Everybody gets a ribbon, right? Like, um, so if it's a local show, like your guild, first of all, I can't encourage you enough to enter your stuff into shows. It's so fun to go and see other people's quilts. Nobody is judging it like you might be judging it. Everybody's just happy to see all the different things. And it's so much fun. And if you haven't been to a quilt show, you've got to go because it's just tons of quilts, tons of inspiration. However, when there's another level to that where it's like competition quilting, where you're entering in juried shows and you're quilting for, you know, um, prizes and stuff. I don't, I've never done that because I don't like the pressure of it. And even though I love to quilt my quilts to death, they might look show quilted. They're not. <laughs> there's a whole different world to that. Um, for our long arm owners, we had a, a show quilter come give pointers because they wanted to know. And I'm like, I can't really help you with that. I think what I would suggest, if you're interested in it, I think you make a quilt that you love, that you had fun quilting. I think you enter it to show and you take the constructive criticism you get back. You take it as a way to help you improve. Um, but I wouldn't let it ruin your day, I guess, is what I would say. Um, so no, I, I wish, wish I had more pointers for you, but I don't, I don't do show quilting. Will we be getting quilting diagrams for last year's BAQ? 
Will we be getting quilting diagrams for last year's Build a Quilt? Yes, they're coming eventually. Um, I, so Build a Quilt is our block of the month and we start it and it runs for 10 months. In fact, uh, we're getting ready to close registration for this year's Build a Quilt. So we've already had a few meetings, had three blocks come out. It's not too late to get in on that. Um, but I'm going to close it probably this week. So just putting that out there. Yes. So I quilted last year's build a quilt and then block of the month. And then I took pictures. I just need to take the time to put the diagrams on them. I know there's people waiting on them. Um, I can post some pictures and then you can at least get inspiration in the meantime. Um, I know that will make Vicki happy. Vicki who comes to build a quilt and asks every time, how's those diagrams coming? And I'm like, they're coming along great, Vicki. Um, so yes, I, I will definitely get those out eventually. It's on the list. That's why I tell everybody it's on the list. It's on the list. What is your favorite thread and weight to quilt with? What is my favorite thread and weight to quilt with? It depends. Don't you love that answer? No. I'm, I'll give you more than that. So I love Glide. Okay, first of all, I love all the threads. All the threads. We should do another uh, threads needle tension live chat. It's been a minute since we've done that one. Um, any high quality machine quilting thread I love. Now for the challenges and for my quilts, I've been using Glide. It's 40 weight, so it's just a, just a little bit, it's thin, but just a little, little thickness to it. It has a nice sheen, but that's from the twist of the fiber. That is not from the, it's not metallic, it's not specialty thread, it's nice and strong. I love poly thread because it's lower lint. Um, if you are piecing and quilting on your sewing machine, then, and you're like, I don't want to switch threads, I don't want to mess with tension, then I would go with like Aurifil, which is a cotton. Um, cotton is great for piecing because it gives you that nice tight seam. I'll have it right here. So that's the one caveat there. Beyond that though, it's what, it, what result do I want to get with the quilting? If I want the quilting to kind of blend in and really just disappear, then I might do a 50 weight matte thread. This doesn't have a little bit of sheen to it that blends in nicely. Um, if I'm doing some micro quilting, which let's just have a little laugh at that because I'm probably not ever going to do micro quilting, but I might use a hundred weight thread so that it doesn't build up. Um, the weight of the thread is just the thickness of the thread. And so the, you know, the thinner the thread, the less it's going to show up. And so that kind of gives you a, just a rough guideline to think through. However, if you get to the extremes of thread, you get the really thick or the really thin, then they're going to get kind of finicky and you're going to have to start messing with tension and stuff, which is fine. But I always tell my new machine quilters, those that want a rule to follow, the ones that are like, just tell me what to do. Um, a 40 to 50 weight is a great range to start in because it's strong enough to handle machine quilting, but it's still thin enough that it kind of blends into the quilt. So if you need a guideline, 40 to 50 um, weight. If you're like, don't tell me what to do, then I will not tell you what to do. But whatever you use, use high quality machine quilting thread. You're, we're putting so much tension on that thread going in all different directions. If you're not using quality thread, it's, it's going to be frustrating. Um, so just keep that in your back pocket there. But that's the kind of thread I like. Can you explain shank size long slash short in respect to ruler quilting? Yep. Can I talk about shank size high versus low shank in regards to ruler quilting? I'll tell you, I never knew what a shank was until machine quilting rulers came out for sewing machines. On the long arm, that's not really a problem. But once that trend started coming, first of all, yay for that. Using rulers on your sewing machine or your long arm is a skill that grows with you. Whether you're a brand new quilter or you, you know, have been quilting a long time, that skill will stay with you. So it's not like something you'll grow out of. Um, but what happened is on sewing machines, we had to start thinking about the shank. And I don't have my sewing machine handy, but the shank, I, I might get this wrong. Okay, this is just me talking, you know. Um, the shank is basically the part of the machine that holds the foot. So that's, you know, where you unscrew your foot, you put your new one on. Where that screw goes in and how the foot is configured determines what your clearance is for the rulers. Okay, so um, all my rulers are almost a quarter inch thick, not quite, which is, which is, which is what is suggested for long arms or high shank sewing machines. However, low shank machines, this cannot fit under the side of the foot, not the foot itself. We don't want anything going under this part. We're just talking about this part right here. So if there isn't enough clearance, you're not able to work along that ruler. The best way to tell is to go to your long arm or go to your sewing machine, put your foot, your sewing, your free motion quilting foot on, put it in the down position and then grab like an Ulfa ruler, something that's an eighth inch thick, really thin 
grab two of them, that should be about quarter inch. And if it can access all sides of your foot, then you're good to go. If you can't, then you might need a low shank ruler. And a low shank ruler, this is not a low shank ruler, but kind of lets you see the difference in thicknesses. It's same idea, just thinner so that it fits up close to that foot. Now, I have taught classes where somebody comes in, they don't realize they have a low shank machine, but they have all the high shank rulers. When we're talking about working from all sides of the foot and why the shank matters is can we fit our ruler up under all that stuff right next to the foot? Even if you have a low shank machine, you can still work from some of the sides of your foot. So for instance, if I, if I can't fit my ruler behind here because of the way the machine is set up, I can always quilt from the front or from the side. So I do have to be a little bit more creative with that, but there are some, some workarounds with it. But ultimately, it has to do with the clearance. Um, and unfortunately, every machine is different. And even manufacturing is totally different. So you can't even say, I have a Janome, is it high or low shank? It depends on the machine itself. But going over to it, grabbing a couple of thinner rulers, seeing if they'll fit on all four sides, that will give you a good indication if you can use a high shank or a thicker ruler. If not, you can get a lower shank one. Mary wants to know who's going to win the Super Bowl. Mary wants to know who's going to win the Super Bowl. I don't know. I hope it's the Chiefs, man. I tell you what. So next week, <laughs> we have some good ideas. We have this cool quilt hanging in the shop. It's a football quilt, and it's red and gold, just because you know those are our favorite colors around here. Um, there was a lot of screaming, a lot of yelling, a lot of drinking, stress drinking, not tons, but it was such a such a chiefs Bengals game, how everyone has been so close except this one. one. Anyway, not to get on football, but I hope we win. But honestly, I'm like, after how stressful the last game was, I'm like, I'm just excited to, you know, I don't know. It's just too much stress for me. <laughs> Have you ever been to the quilt show in Madison, Wisconsin? Have I ever been to the quilt show in Madison, Wisconsin? I have not, not, to, not that I can recall. Um, sounds like fun. I, especially before COVID, I would travel and teach a lot, and that was so much fun. Um, but after COVID, and then now my children are a little bit older, so I've not been traveling as much, but I have been like, you know, it's, it might be fun to go to a show just to go see it. Um, I know that Kansas City Regional Quilt Festival is coming up here, so if you're looking for a show, it's the weekend after the quilt walk. So, I mean, you could have almost two weeks of quilting fun. Um, any show is fun to go to, but I haven't been to that one, no. For the long arm classes, for those of you around town, the question was, if you're not doing a class on a certain day, is there anything to do or what else to do around here? Um, so we are a suburb of Kansas City. So even though um, we're called Liberty, Missouri is the name of, of the town that we're in. It's 20 minutes from the airport, 20 minutes from downtown. There is so much to do. Even here on the historical square where we're at, there's plenty of shopping. There's I, I get in so much trouble, let me tell you, because I can go eat, I can go get a massage, I can go get some home decor, some clothing, um, barbecue. There's a brewery around here. There's also some really fun museums. And if you're into obscure museums, there's some good ones. There's a Clay County Historical Museum, which is really fun. It used to be a doctor's office upstairs. I'm getting way off topic here, but, so you go in and it's like the pharmacy. So how it used to be, the doctor was upstairs, his living quarters, his office where you'd go visit, and then the downstairs with the pharmacy. And so they have that old pharmacy and a lot of um, quilt. They have quilts there. They have just artifacts from Clay County, just from, you know, back in the 1800s. And then you can go up to the office and see what it would have been like to go to a doctor in the 1800s. And it would have been scary, especially when they show like the women's tools, like birthing and, and all the other stuff. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And then you can go in the basement and they have little vignettes of like what life would have been like homesteading. Beyond that, you can take a quick 20 minute drive into Kansas City and there's tons of stuff to do there. I won't even try to. World War One Museum, um, there's the Power and Light District, there's the Plaza, there's all sorts of things. There's a roastery coffee place, you can do tours there. I mean, I probably should just be Kansas City tour tourism rep here because it's a lot of fun. And then um, Harry Truman Library is in Independence. There's tons. So if you need some specifics, if you're coming, you're not sure what to do, let us know. We'll, we'll definitely help figure it out. Sean has to have the number and the name on that purple glide thread right here. Sean wants to know the number and the name of this glide thread right here. This is Viking, Viking Purple. And the number, are we ready? 42583. 
Viking Glide 42583. Um, I had another thought real quick. Oh, things to do. I guess I should mention we're only 45 minutes from Missouri Star Quilt Company. So, I mean, if you're going to be here, you might as well go see Jenny. Or if you're going to see Jenny, you might as well come by and see me. So there's plenty. And pl lots of quilt shops, too. Lots of – you could really blow through your time and money pretty quickly if you need to. How about one more question since it's 3.30? Ooh. Oh, or you can do two. Yes, I'm good. I'm new to quilting. What is micro quilting? Okay. I'm new to quilting. What is micro quilting? It is where people will quilt very, very, very tiny micro size as a filler to make something else pop out. And so, I mean, we're talking like, if you've ever get, get a chance to go to like, especially a machine quilting show or um, quilt festival, oh my gosh, in Houston, any of that, you'll see, you'll see some of that. It's very tiny. And so it's very time consuming, as you can imagine. Um, but man, it, it looks really cool. So it, that micro quilting is usually a stipple or a meander, but it could be any design but it's just very tiny. Oh, just even thinking about it gives me kind of like the, whew. All right, one more. Who, who made Jessica happy in? I'm signed up for the thread painting class. I love thread painting and use 48 glide on my DMX machine. Will we use this in the class on the phone? So the person said they're signed up for the thread painting class and they love glide and the 40 weight on their sewing machine. Will we be using that in the thread painting class? Yes. Um, I'm super excited. So. Th when I was putting together the long arm classes we're gonna do, I try to have your, your basic, not your basic ones, but your perennial favorites, feathers, rulers, but I wanted to throw some, throw some new topics in there too. And so this will be the first time I'm teaching a thread painting class. So yes, we will play with all kinds of threads and we're gonna see the difference between 40 and 50 and 100 weight. And we're gonna, so we're gonna really, it, it could be called a thread playing class or thread scribble class, but yes, we will be, playing with all different types of threads, including the glide and, and beyond. We'll, be, we'll talk about metallic, we'll talk about glitter thread, um, we'll, we'll see how to layer them on top of each other. I'm, I'm really excited to put that together. All right, everybody, thank you for such great questions. Honestly, I told Jessica, I'm like, I, I guess we'll just talk for 10 minutes and, and move on. So thank you. I, again, it's a little bit of a different format than normal. Um, looking forward to, hopefully, Tula will show her quilt. Um, if you watch her Tula Talking Tuesdays, you'll see that she put the wrong binding on there, which is why it's not ready, which to me is hilarious because I'm like, oh, it doesn't need bound anyway, right? It's fine. And the binding looked fine, but that's not how Tula rolls. She's very particular. Um, that's why we work so great together. But can't wait to show you because um, the quilt, you saw it probably either on her thing or on the um, title card before I switched it. It's fun. It's a lot of like potion bottles. And then I even took video of me quilting some of it so I can kind of talk through how we got to this point. And so I can't wait to uh, finally get to show you that. Anyway, everybody, be safe. Have a great week. I'll be back next Thursday, again, 3 p.m. Central for the live chat. If you're not watching this live, no worries. You can always leave your questions in the comments and I get on there from time to time to answer them. Or you can pop back in during a live chat and ask your question and let me answer it then. So until next week, everybody, happy, happy quilting.